Hi, this is Alan Gassman. We're going to start the webinar now, and we really appreciate everybody's attendance. We started spreadsheeting extensively to help clients determine whether the portability allowance would be sufficient to allow them to avoid federal estate tax. And we found that if you grow a client's assets for 30 years, even starting at a relatively modest client, that you really can't rely on portability. So uh, my, so my future son-in-law is a, is a software engineer and designer. So I asked him to design a software program that we could use that would do a few things that the other software programs don't do. Uh, the first thing is that this program allows you to see what's going on with results as you dial the numbers up and down. And the second thing is this program is going to prepare a letter for you that will explain four to five different planning techniques customized to exactly what you have set in the computer. And the third thing that this program is going to do is, with the help of Jerry Hash that we've been working with, it is going to do sales to intentionally grant or, uh, defective grant or trusts. It's going to do qualified personal residence trust work and it's going to do private annuity sale work, which is going to be you know, really interesting the way Jerry has this laid out. What we wanted to do today was to, first of all, of course, give each of you free access to the software as it now stands, and also to explain to you what it's going to do for you today, what it's going to be able to do for you in a couple of weeks, and most important, to get your input on it. We're very, very excited about this. We think we'll eventually find a national platform for it. But for now, we are really just want you to use it, enjoy it, and uh, go to places where you've never been before, like Star Trek. And if you haven't seen that new movie, I saw it Sunday, two thumbs up. It's really good. All right, so now we're on slide three. And slide three is not the actual program. You're seeing a what, sort of a... Uh, cut and pasted copy. Later we're going to show you the actual program in live view. But here's what you have here is there's only three columns of information to fill in. And just about anything that could happen to your for your client that you need to show them is in these three columns. The first column is the client information. The second column is their financial information. And the third column has to do with their life insurance. And what you're going to see is that when you change the numbers in each of these columns on the right-hand side, you're going to be sliding the results back and forth. So in other words, if you increase gifting, you're going to increase a gift trust. You're going to decrease a state tax and the taxable estate. It's really neat. Let's go to page four. Page four, I just want to explain each of the input modules so that you know what we're looking at. So on the top left-hand side, you can put in your client's name and their age, put in which sex they are, and once you put in whether they're smoker or non-smoker, it will immediately tell you their life expectancy. Not their IRS actuarial life expectancy, but their life insurance actuary life expectancy, which is kind of nice to know. Then the lifetime gift exclusion amount that they've used in the past can go in the next place. Then the projected year of the first death can go there next. Then the second spouse's name, and if they have a separate last name, that's fine. It will accommodate that. Then the age of the second spouse, female or male, smoker or non-smoker, and then the exclusion that that spouse has used. So, of course, that's very easy. And again, when we get to the actual program, Ken's going to show you how if you slide the, uh, the date of death bar, it's going to slide the results. Now, we go to the financial column. And in the financial column for this couple, we're saying that they have a $750,000 house. They have business and investment assets of $5 million. They have portfolio additions of $50,000 a year while both spouses are alive. And after one spouse dies, they're going to reduce their portfolio by $150,000 a year. So you can assume that the first spouse to die is the main breadwinner. And then when that spouse dies, the second spouse is going to actually spend money. Then you can tell the, it, what the initial bypass trust will be. And if you're going with total portability, that's going to be zero. You can tell them how many gifts you're going to make 
In other words, how many children do you have that would receive $14,000 a year gifts? So in this situation, they have two children. And then you can tell them what portion of these gifts are going to be saved in a gifting trust versus spent by these children. And then to the extent you're giving to a gifting trust, you can tell them what portion of this will be discounted. So in other words, I can say to the client, look, you have two children. That's $28,000 a year per parent. While we're both alive, that's $56,000 a year in gifting. Let's say the kids are going to spend half. That allows $28,000 remaining. If we do a flat gift of $28,000, here's one result. If we give $28,000 worth of discounted partnership interests using a discount that I can put in the next spot, here's the next result. And then we have a spot for the growth rate of the home. 3.03% is the Pinellas County average for the last 30 years. Then we have an investment growth rate. 10.98% is the S&P 500 for the past 30 years. Investment fees and tax reduction rate, we have a 1.5%. How long are we going? 25 years. Consumer price index rate, which is going to affect both your $14,000 per year gifting allowance, and it goes up in $1,000 increments in our program, just like it does in real life. And then also your portability allowance. And then the state tax rate, which we have at 40%. The next thing that it now accommodates is if you have life insurance that you want to put in an irrevocable life insurance trust, if it's on the first spouse to die, what's your annual premium? How many years of premiums? What's your death benefit? If it's on the second spouse to die, what's your annual premium? What's your number of years premiums? What's your death benefit? If you want to do a second to die, it's the same, same thing. Later, we will accommodate life insurance outside of life insurance trusts, and we will be able to accommodate any premium schedule that you want to input and any death benefits. So if you have a typical permanent life policy where the premiums are stationary but the death benefit goes up gradually, your secretary will be able to cut and paste that right off of the PDF projection or illustration that you receive from the life insurance agent right onto this program. Okay, so then the next slide, this, is good. this shows you just briefly what you'll see while you enter this information. Because every time you change the information, you're going to get these numbers moving. And you're going to want to get these numbers moving. Initially, you're going to see the bad news when you put the numbers in and the client has a lot of estate tax. But then as you, for example, scroll up on the bypass trust, scrolling down from relying on portability, you're going to see savings. That may get you to a zero estate tax. You may be done. Or you may want to then go to a third thing, which would be the gifting. But in any event, all of these numbers on the right-hand side are going to change instantaneously as you run the numbers, which Ken is also going to show you in a bit. Now, slide six, this is not yet working. It will be working in the next week and a half, we estimate. This will be for every scenario that you decide to capture, you'll be able to click a Save button. And when you click that Save button, your input will be stored as a PDF. Your illustration that we just showed you on the prior page will be stored as a PDF. And this will appear as another PDF that you can show the client. So every time you click that Save button, that exact scenario is going to show you what their assets are in the beginning for individually and for each trust across the top, what those assets become on the second death, including showing you the growth rates, and what you have after, the, I mean, on the middle column is the, after the first death, the second column is after the second death, and then we've made this very simple. We're very open to your suggestions, but I felt that this was a good way that you could explain it to clients at the same time that you're explaining why you're doing a bypass trust, why you're, why you're doing a gifting trust, I don't have a Q-tip trust on here yet. Eventually, I think we'll probably build up to Q-tip, but I think we're going to explain to our clients that the surviving spouse assets include the Q-tip. But we'll probably be adding a Q-tip fairly soon. Now the explanation letter or memo, this is going to come out. 
It's going to be present. You're going to put your name into the program, so it's going to say that it's by your name. You're Bobby Smith. It's going to say the name of your company if you like. It's going to have the client's names, and it's going to show them module one. If you did no planning and you, you only relied on portability, here's how it works. Module two, if you use a bypass trust, here's how it works. Module three, annual gifting, no discounts. Module four, annual gifting with, with discounts. Then we're also going to be adding a module five. And this is just, when we say module, we mean provision of the letter. Module five is going to be with one life insurance trust. Module six is going to be another one. Module seven is going to be another one. Then eventually we're going to have this for the installment sales, the grant or retain, uh, the Cuperts and, and the other things. But if you take a look at the letter, we'll be glad to send this to you as a Word document. You can start customizing it for yourself. If you would do one of these for a client, I think you're going to find, and we've done a few of these for clients, that when they get these, they say, wow, you guys have really done a lot of work. We understand the system better. We believe it now because you used our numbers. Show us a little bit lower inflation. Show us a little bit faster rate of return. So this should save you a lot of time because it's going to be 80% computer driven and then your secretary and you can do the rest. So Ken, let me Ken and Chris, let me hand it off to you. I thank both of you for all the hard work you've done on this, but why don't you show us uh, some live animation here? And thanks very much, Alan. So what we have here is the first scenario that we talked about. We do not have a bypass trust. And to just show you how easily the program works where you slide in the values, you can go down to the bypass trust value here, increase it in increments of 250,000. It's also important to note that you can actually type in the number here if you want to for whatever specific number you want. We just thought it would be easier to have an increase in $250,000 increments. You can see just by funding a $2, or $2 million bypass trust on the first debt, we've saved the family already about $2.6 million worth of estate tax on the second debt in 25 years. Now let, let's just go, let, let's look just to slow down a little bit. On the far left-hand side, if they want to have the client individual information, you click on client there, mm -hmm. that comes up. Then when it's time to input their, their, and let's show them when you add, when you increase the age, the life expectancy at the top center automatically changes. So we're down to 6.6 .6 years if we went up to age 80 as opposed to the 75 where we started and it's 9.2. Right, and if you change their, their year of death, smoker, non -smoker. You could show them if you change their year of death by a few years that the bars automatically move to where you want it to go so you can demonstrate the savings for your client. So then we go up to financial information. You click there and that column comes up. And then you can adjust this data for where you want it to go. As Ken showed you, the difference between how much you can put in that credit shelter trust makes a big difference. Your growth rate makes a big difference. The allocation of assets can make a difference. But we think that this is a simple way to show it. And then the third column above there is the life insurance. So that's where you would input your life insurance information. Now the top center, when you click chart, that's where your chart's going to show up. When you tr click trust logistics, that's where your it's going to show you this arrangement. And for people with dual screens, we will eventually have this as a dual screen product. We don't, of course, have it as a dual screen product yet. And then when you click client letter, that's going to come up. And uh, if you go back to the uh, chart where we were, you can also see where do we click to save for David. That's Anyway, now what Ken's showing you, though, at the bottom is these numbers also move simultaneously. You want to show them. So if, you, if you're a numbers person or you want to show the clients all these calculations, as you move the numbers, every number changes. This shows you some of the spreadsheets that are live in action at the backstage. So Ken, I'll go ahead and stay out of your way now so you can show them an actual scenario. Okay. And uh, one other thing to note, too, on the program is we do have some help features where if you hover over the question mark, a quick explanation comes up for the term to help people that are a little less versed in the terminology. So what we were showing here earlier, like we talked about, is if we increase the value of the bypass trust, you can see how the decreases the total estate tax is going to be paid by the client on the second debt. 
Another feature that we can implement here, uh, and here we didn't have them making any discounted gifts at all. We have them just making gifts of about 55% of the total that they could give to the gifting trust, but just using cash gifts. So if we make that 100% of discounted gifting, you can see that we just decreased the estate tax by about another million dollars simply by using discounted partnership interest which would be a good point to discuss with your clients rather than making a straight cash gift to the children or to the gifting trust. Now, as Alan mentioned, we also have life insurance premium. So what you can do is you can say that you're going to have life insurance of $10,000 for 30 years on the second surviving spouse. And you can increase that death benefit so that that death benefit will also show on the chart, which you can see here. And you can see how it's also increased the total amount passing to the family. And you can do a similar situation with the second to die policy as well, where you're going to increase the total amount passed to the family and be able to show this on the chart as well. It's also nice to know that the life insurance trust that we have here, they are growing at the same asset growth rate as the actual stocks and securities that you normally would have in the, in the investments. So that this first spouse's death, it was only a million dollars, but after the growth rate over 20 plus years, you get up to $6 million worth of assets passing in the first dialect outside of the estate. Okay, let's just show each row real quick. The first row is lifetime gifts, so that would start at zero if you're not going to do lifetime gifting, and then it grows exponentially if you do. And, of course, it's going to take into account both spouses gifting during the joint lifetime and then uh, one spouse gifting after one dies. And you can see the increase or decrease depending on the number of children. How many children, whether you want to put that daughter-in-law in there or not, because you put that daughter-in-law in there and snap it from two to three, and what happens? If you snap it from two to three... You save a lot of estate tax. It might be worth it. One point three million. It'd be worth letting risking losing one crummy power withdrawal <laughs> if she splits. So then the bypass trust is the next row across, and then after that we have the life insurance trust on the first dying spouse, then the life insurance trust on the second dying spouse, then the second to die life insurance trust. Then the assets that are subject to estate tax. We're showing the portability part is in green, and the part above the portability part and the exemption. I'm sorry, the portability part is the first green section. Then the surviving spouse's exemption is the second green se section. And then the purple section is the part that's exposed to estate tax. We take that purple section, we show it one more time below there to make it clear, and then we have the estate tax in red. And what's left, and it passes to the family, $45 million. Now keep in mind, this is a married couple with $5,250,000 of investments. The surviving spouse is going to spend $150,000 a year. The, the, they have a $750,000 house. The assets are going to grow only at the historical rate, maybe with higher investment costs than most people are going to pay. And look at the size of this estate and look how much money you've saved them by doing some nice planning. So that's why we think that this is a very good tool. We published that article for Limeburg. We'll be glad to send it to you called the $28 million estate. Uh, I mean, the state. That was you know, based on the spreadsheet that became the software. Chris, do you have anything to add? Yeah, Ken's about to show here. You know, that's the examples we just showed are basically filling up a bypass trust with about $2.5 million on the first death. So if you go ahead and fund the full bypass trust on the first death, at Five million two fifty right now. You can see the dramatic effect that it has on estate tax savings. Where you have the same family, you have no estate tax exposure. You have about forty-five million dollars worth of assets after twenty-five years. Uh, and really gets down to the core of why we did this in the portability versus credit shelter trust dichotomy. And this is a great illustrator for our clients to see that. So we welcome you and all, everyone you know to use this. We, we'd like to get a few hundred people using it. We have a few dozen people using it. Uh, we welcome your ideas. I had a couple ideas while we were, while we were talking today. I'll be calling the software guy tonight. But uh, please join in. And by the way, I'm really impressed with the people on this call. I, I won't use your names because of confidentiality, but there's some real mental powerhouses on this call, and, and you know who you are. Uh, we really appreciate all of your comments. Please give us any questions, and uh, have a fantastic day. And don't forget to see Star Trek.